So today is all about Aqua de Jo. This is admittedly one of my favorite designer fragrance lines. I think the evolution over the years, going back, you know, 20 plus years ago, has been pretty significant. And of course, the Eau de Toilette needs no introduction. It was one of the best sellers for men ever. Now, as the years have gone by, they've produced many flankers, some of which are limited editions and are harder to get these days. But I'm going to cover essentially all of them today. So we're going to be going over everything from the new uh, Profondo 2024 Eau de Parfum, uh, the new Parfum 2024, because they kind of changed that one up a little bit as far as the bottle is concerned. I'm going to be going back to some of the discontinued ones. I'm missing one or two, and I think that's about it. Like there was an Aqua de Jo Blue edition or something, which I think was just a rebottled Eau de Toilette and like a limited edition bottle. So there's a few odds and ends that I haven't secured, but I got most of them here. And so we're just gonna run through all of these in a buying guide format. I try to make these to make it easy for you to know what you should purchase. Okay, so let's start off with the Eau de Toilette. And we're not going in chronological order as far as release is concerned. Uh, they're just kind of thrown in here in the mix. I saved some of the discontinued ones towards the end, and we'll get there. But again, Eau de Toilette is where we're starting off. Okay, now I will say this as well. I do believe that they also released an update to this one this year as well. I couldn't make myself buy it. I'm sorry. So that one won't be in here either. I And I think that's a testament to my opinion right now on Aqua de Jo Eau de Toilette. Maybe they completely revolutionized the new Eau de Toilette this year. But somehow, I don't think so, and somehow, I would imagine that most of the other flankers are still going to be better anyway. And so again, the Eau de Toilette needs no introduction. It's an aquatic, bright, fresh, citrusy fragrance, and it smells great. It's a true classic, you know. The EDT, it's nice, you know. There's, there's nothing wrong with it, but it also isn't what it used to be. Now, I'll admit, this is all just hearsay on my part because when Aqua de Jo came out, I was born, so I wasn't wearing the OG back in the day, obviously, but from what I've heard everybody else say online, it's not what it used to be, and that's also nothing new with fragrances in general. I'm just going to say it. I think that there are many other options, better options than the Eau de Toilette, which we're going to cover today, so, you know, while it's uh, an iconic scent, maybe you could do better. That leads us into Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum. So, Again, not chronological order here. It might look that way because, you know, usually it goes Eau de Toilette and then an Eau de Parfum. Not the case. This came out a couple of years ago, and we've had many other flankers that came out before this. So this is the first standalone Eau de Parfum. It's kind of weird how they did that, but that's how they did it. And so essentially what the Eau de Parfum does is they take the original Eau de Toilette DNA so the aquatic notes, the sea notes, the citrus, and they add in a pretty heavy dose of an aromatic package. So like a sage, a lavender, and, and notes like that. So it's a more aromatic version of that original. That was also done with Aqua de Jo Ascenza, which we'll cover later on, but that's kind of just what this is in a nutshell. Ascenza is discontinued and hard to get now. The Eau de Parfum is readily available at retail and at discounters. This is kind of what Ascenza used to be, an aromatic version of Aqua de Jo. And while I typically think of Aqua de Jo Eau de Toilette as a summer scent, I can see the Eau de Parfum being really good for spring. Of course, it's going to work great in summertime as well, but due to the aromatic mid that this one has, it just works really well for a spring day when it's not scorching hot but not cold either. It's just pleasant outside. You know, this this just kind of has a, a spring uplifting feeling to it. Also could work great for a, a cooler fall day. If you don't want to fully commit to a winter scent or a fall scent yet, you still want something with a bit of a fresh and kind of invigorating smell, Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum is a great option. And I believe, unless I'm missing something here, I think this was left alone this year. So they didn't do anything different with this. They didn't change the bottle size or the concentration or name or anything like that. This is uh, just Aqua de Jo Eau de Parfum. There's so many that I just don't know where to go next. I'm doing my best to make this make sense, but who knows? It's just all, it'll all come together at some point. Up next, we have Aqua de Jo Profondo. So this is Profondo 2020, the first version. 
This one is iconic for the mineral notes in here that you get off the opening. So it truly smells like mineral water, like oceanic water, very realistic and also very unique. There really aren't too many aquatic uh, designer or niche fragrances out there that have the same type of delivery that this one has. It truly is something special. You get quite a bit of orange alongside of that as well. And of course, sea notes or aquatic notes or whatever you want to call them. A bit of an aromatic focus on this as well. Maybe not quite as much as something like the Eau de Parfum or Ascenza, but does lean in that direction. Ultimately, it is very summer focused. If I had to choose the best time of year for this one, it would be no surprise, summertime. It just smells like you're on the beach, you're at the ocean, you're on vacation. It's very crisp and refreshing, especially for really, really hot, humid, miserable summer days. You know, I've said it before, there aren't a lot of fragrances that I would wear when it's hot and humid outside. You know, it's it, sometimes it's just not fun. This is one that could cool you down a little bit. So it really, it works well in that type of environment. It's got good performance as well. It's a seven, eight hour scent. So, you know, not gonna be necessarily beast mode by any means, but also not gonna be something that's just inherently weak either. I mean, given the concentration and given the type of scent that it is, it really does pretty well. Okay, so let's stick with Profondo then. Might as well, since we're here. Let's go with the new Aqua de Joe Profondo Eau de Parfum. This is the 2024 release. So let's first look at the bottles here. So this is a big 200 ml. Might not be the best comparison. Let me fix that. It's just what I need to do, get out more Aqua de Joe off the shelf. Here's a 125 of Profondo 2020. Here is the new Profondo Eau de Parfum 2024. So the differences are going to be gradient. The new one has a gradient, the old one does not. The new one says Eau de Parfum, the old one does not. And you can kind of see the other visual differences. This one says Giorgio Armani at the bottom, the 2020 does not. Also, cap. They both have click on caps. And I'm gonna explain a little bit later on why this is weird. So anyway, back to the 2024. Still smells a lot like Profondo, and it kind of had a lot of people questioning is it exactly the same? Are they just putting it in a different bottle? Instead of being 125, it's a 100 and, and you know something along those lines. Actually, it is a bit different. The opening is where you see that difference. It's actually brighter and fresher off the rip. And it kind of pulls you in a little bit more, I feel like. Now you still get the mineral notes for sure, but they don't come through as strong until a bit later on. But right off that opening, man, it is punchy. It is strong. It opens up. With, with some power behind it. And I love that opening. At the end of the day, guys, they're very close. It's almost to the point where they're splitting hairs. Most people, it's probably not gonna matter all that much which one you go with. I would kind of tell you, for most of you guys out there, whichever one you could get at a better price is probably what you're gonna wanna consider. Again, you know, you might wanna sample both of them and, and see which one you prefer. It's hard for me to answer because I like both of them. I almost like the opening of the new one a bit better, I will admit, and I wasn't expecting that to be the case, and it wasn't the case when I first got it in, but as I've spent more time with it and worn it more this past summer, yeah, I'm really digging that opening especially. So the new Profondo Eau de Parfum, it's about on par performance-wise with the original, so you're not seeing much of a difference there. Basically what it comes down to is the presentation, bottle's a bit different, bottle size, gradient, and then also that opening is a bit brighter and more punchy. So that's kind of where you're at. Also, sticking with new and also with Profondo, we have Profondo Parfum. So this one also came out this year. Here's where it gets weird. Magnetic cap. Same bottle size as Profondo Eau de Parfum 2024. And, you know, other than gradient and, and texture, you know, the bottles are the same. This one has kind of a texture. Listen, right? This one, so there, there's no texture. So those are the differences. But magnetic cap, it's really weird. Now you pay a little bit more for Profondo Parfum, although not a ton more. And it also has hit discounters really quickly and you can get it for 120-ish bucks when it's at its, its, you know, normal going rate at discounters. So what's the difference here? Well, this is truly a parfum concentration, whereas it actually smells richer, heavier, stronger, and sweeter 
than Profondo, both of them. So this is actually, as far as what's in production right now, about the sweetest Aqua de Joe you can buy. Okay, Again, in production, not talking discontinued ones or really hard to get ones. But as far as what they're making, this is about the sweetest one. So if you wanted an Aqua de Joe for nighttime, this is it. And that is exactly how I describe this one, guys. It is Aqua de Joe Profondo for evening use. That's what I view it as. And the reason why is because if you're wearing Profondo during the day to school, to work, running errands, and you've got something you're going to in the evening, you just spray this one on over top and they layer perfectly and then you're good to go and you have something a bit more sweet, a bit more inviting and alluring for an evening scenario. And again, it is sweeter, but when the sun's down and it's, you know, summertime it cools off if you're indoors it doesn't matter anyway so that's kind of how i view this one it threw people off because it is sweeter than profondo and i guess they were expecting it to be on the same level of freshness but I, you know it's like how do you go as far as flankers are concerned do you make it different do you make it just barely barely different at all you know so i think they kind of struck a pretty good balance here of still tying back to that original dna but making it worthwhile to purchase if you do want a sweeter profondo which not everybody does performance is a little bit better given the concentration and given the the overall kind of structure of this one so it's about a nine hour scent or so still nothing crazy to write home about but still not bad either and at discounter rates it's not unreasonable and again, I don't mind this one at all. I like it for a evening scenario. Okay, now let's go over to where the legend was born, in my opinion. Of course, the Eau de Toilette was on its own, but as far as what kept the Aqua de Joe line alive and relevant, in my opinion, this is just what did it. This is what carried it for years. Aqua de Joe Profumo. This one is now discontinued and has been replaced by the Parfum, which we will cover up next. But I wanted to throw this one in first just kind of as a preface to help explain where things are going. They introduce incense and patchouli into the original blend, so it still has that fresh aquatic note, but it does have a smoky sweetness, also a nighttime smelling scent, but not in the same way that Profondo Parfum is. The stuff smells amazing. It smells like a summer night on the beach. It just, it's everything that I would want in a more refined aquatic scent. And just because it has that, that incense patchouli kind of smokiness to it, it doesn't mean that it's hard to wear in summertime because it's still very wearable. I still think this is a summer scent. Even when it's hot out, I've worn it. Guys, this has been one of my signatures for years. I have so many bottles of it, had no problem. I won't spend too much time on this in particular because it's been replaced, so we'll talk about the replacements now, but just know this, this is an OG. It came out before the Profondos, right? But again, I'm trying to go with what's in production and all of that stuff. So now let's go over to the replacements, okay? So it actually started off with Aqua de Joe Parfum. Now we just got this like, what was it, last year, something like that. And that was after they discontinued Profumo and it was a very scary time because we didn't know what was happening. So instead of using like an incense patchouli, they're using like an olibanum in here, but it still does essentially the same thing. It's Aqua de Joe Profumo in a nutshell with a couple very minor variations. The main one being the opening doesn't have the same type of grassy green smell, which is very evident in Profumo. And it was something that a lot of people, myself included, didn't like. As much as it sounds like I'm a fanboy for Aqua de Joe Profumo because it's one of my favorites ever, I can also recognize its faults or its, its you know, negatives or downsides. And one of them was the opening. Openly, I don't like the opening of Profumo. It gets a million times better in the dry down. This one, they fixed that problem where you don't really have much of that in the opening at all. Maybe still a little bit, but not to the level of those OG Profumo bottles, the older batches. Those were green off the top and a bit too much sometimes. It was just uncharacteristic as far as what the scent would develop into. So these days, if Aqua de Joe Profumo sounds good to you, don't seek out a bottle of that. Just buy the Parfum instead. You can get it on discounters, no problem at all. It's got good performance. It's a 9-10 hour scent, true Parfum concentration. It's about on par with the original, which is a great performer as well. Okay, now let's talk about Aqua de Joe Parfum. 2024 because now it's different. That bottle I was holding up there a second ago was a 125. This one is a 100. 
This has a snap click cap. This one has a magnetic cap, okay? What's going on? I mean, what's the difference between this and, oh boy. These came out in the same year, Profondo 24, Parfum 24, click cap, magnetic cap. Why are they doing that? I don't know. So what's the difference between the new Parfum and the old, which is like a year old now? Honestly, nothing really, okay? Um, not a whole lot. It's, it's the bottle is gonna be different. You get a magnetic cap now. The opening, it has that same opening, dries down to the same, nice smoky dry down. That's essentially it. Again, when it comes down to it, guys, whichever one you can get for a good price is the one you should get. So don't go out and overpay for one or the other. Really, you don't even need to pay retail for them. You can get them at discounters. All right, now let's get into Aqua de Joe Absolue. This one has always been kind of the oddball out. You know, it came out after Profumo, but it just didn't live up to what Profumo was, and it kind of disappointed people, which I, you know, I can understand, but I also really like it too. Uh, it's discontinued officially, but you can still get it on discounters quite often. Every time it comes in stock, I send out an email and a text to my mailing list and my texting list. Uh, so a lot of people have been able to get their bottle. What it is essentially is kind of their answer to a sweeter Invictus Aqua style summer scent. So while a lot of these Aqua de Jo summer fragrances are, are, are fresh and citrusy and bright, and this one has kind of a bubblegummy sweet little hint to it and a, a bit of a fruitiness to it that none of the others have, which is just a modern style to kind of what's been going on. And especially at the time when they put this out, that was kind of what was really popular. So a little bit of a fruity sweetness, a little bit of like a, a lavender, uh, you know, freshly washed clothes type of feeling, kind of like how Mont Blanc Legend has, like that, that fresh t-shirt crisp smell. That's what this one has, but it has more of a fruity sweetness than that, kind of more on par with like a Rosasi Hawass and Victus Aqua style. It just never got all that popular, never took off in a big way, and subsequently got discontinued. I still do really like it though. If you can get a bottle for a good price, I recommend it. Now, it's a good performer, but not as good as Profondo Parfum or, or, or Parfum or Profumo. It's a seven hour scent, roughly. So, you know, it gets the job done. And yet another one that did not take off at all and was not around for very long, or at least it seemed like, was Absolute Instinct. So this one, I mean, really hard to get. I haven't seen this one in stock for probably years. I mean, it's just limited quantities and never was something that was that was popularized. Now this one here, it actually is pretty sweet. So like I was saying earlier, Profondo Parfum is the sweetest in production Aqua de Joe right now, but this one might even be sweeter than that. It's just obviously not in the running because it's not in production, but it has like a, a very strong woody presence with, again, quite a bit of a, a sweet undertone as well. This is one that I've uh, never been the biggest fan of. It is the least Aqua de Joe smelling Aqua de Joe that we've had as well. I respect it and I don't hate it. I don't mind it but it's just not one of my favorites. And really, even when it was in production more, it was just like, I'm not reaching for this, I'm just going for Profumo or something like that, but not bad. And if you're into collectibles, if you're into trying to get all of them, you know, this is one to be on the lookout for. It does smell nice, does have a pretty cool bottle, but yeah, not one of my favorites. It is a good performer though, due to the just the overall makeup of this one. So about eight, eight and a half, nine hours in that range, not bad. Okay, so now let's go to the OG Ascenza. Like I mentioned earlier, guys, this is kind of where that aromatic take on Aqua de Joe started. So this is a big old 200 that I bought when I heard it was being discontinued. I wish I would have bought more, but I uh, couldn't afford it then. So I just got this one, man. You know, the bottle is nothing special. It's really dusty right now. Nothing special. And I don't know if it's just nostalgia, but it looks beautiful. I mean, look at that bottle. Looks great. I mean, again, nothing to it, but it's clear. It's just, ah, oh, looks nice. I miss this stuff. Even though the Eau de Parfum essentially accomplishes this, you know, there's something about the OG that is great. Got a magnetic cap, aromatic take on the DNA, 
Is it worth going out there and spending a bunch of money on? No, just get the Oda Parfum, but it is cool to have around. Okay, now let's jump back over to Profondo. No, we're not done with Profondo. This is an interesting one. It's Profondo Lights. One thing people didn't know about this that I'm not really gonna be able to demonstrate, but take my word for it. It's called Profondo Lights. The bottle actually glows in the dark. So this lettering is raised. If you put a flashlight to it or one of these bright recording lights to it and you kill all the lights, it glows in the dark. That's a really cool touch. And, you know, I think if more people knew about that, it probably would have gotten sold more. But again, I didn't even know about it. A subscriber pointed it out and I was like, I'm going to try that for myself. And lo and behold, it, it does glow in the dark. So it doesn't have the mineral notes of Profondo. It's pretty fresh. It's aquatic. It's got the sea notes, all of that stuff, just lacking the mineral notes that makes Profondo what it is. And it's yet another more kind of limited edition filler release, kind of like Absolute Instinct, where it's just, it's fine, but there are better options. It's a good performer. It's yet another one that's seven, eight hours, but you know, nothing too special about this one, really. The bottle is kind of the selling point. That's about it. And last up for this video, you probably thought that I forgot about this but I didn't, I just saved it for the end. Aqua de Jo Profumo Special Blend. Yet another one that I wish I would have bought more of. Now, for a lot of people, this was a gimmick. You know, they saw it released and they're like, oh, that's bogus, it's the same thing, just in a limited edition bottle with gold accenting. There actually is a difference in smell. It does have a richer patchouli smell to it. Now, do I buy the whole story about, and this is probably, you know, inaccurate, but it was something about the patchouli was sourced from somewhere else off the top of my head is kind of what they were marketing it as. Do I buy that necessarily? No, probably not. But do I think it does have a heavier patchouli approach and is a bit richer and heavier than the original? 100%. You can smell a difference. It's maybe not the biggest difference ever, and it probably wasn't worth the price tag that this was going for at that time, and especially not now but it is noticeable, especially if you've spent as much time with Profumo as I have. And I love how it smells. I do prefer this over the original Profumo. I prefer the smell of this over the Parfum, but this is all I have, and I'm just not gonna bring myself to burn through a bottle because I could. I, I go through Profumo Parfum heavily, and I'm not gonna do it. I want to, but I'm not. Great performer, you know, but it's just richer patchouli. If you could get a bottle for like a hundred bucks or something, just someone doesn't know what they have and they're getting rid of it, jump on that. But other than that, you know, it is what it is. Alrighty guys, there you have it. There is an updated Aqua de Jo buying guide, kind of all over the place, but I'm just trying to prioritize the things that you can buy right now. I'm trying to save some of the other stuff for the end and just kind of cover the things that people are probably curious about, which was the new releases of prior since to begin with, like the new Profondo 2024 Eau de Parfum and the new Parfum, right? Kind of weird, so I hope that cleared it up. I will link each and every one of these down below in the description, that way you can check these out. You can get entered to win a bundle of 24 fragrances by clicking the first link down below and going and doing some shopping there. I've got a mailing list you can sign up to again for the rare discontinued things. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.